However, I'm going to read you the Bible here, and we're going to hear the word of the Lord. And we're going to read from Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to read from my handy dandy King James Version. And I want to tell you, this is a time to really release your faith in a big way. Know that God is giving restitution. And the wealth of the wicked is being stripped and given to the righteous. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready to build. And we need to be really tuned in to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because he's going to be revealing these things to us. And he wants to partner with us. Is it great that there won't be an IRS? Yes. Is it great that we're going to get uh, the plunder from these, these battles? President Trump is at the tip of the spear, all these things. Yes. But what I'm telling you about, I'm speaking to your heart today. I'm speaking to your faith today. God is asking you, what are you going to do with the plunder? What are you going to do with the wealth that is being transferred over to you as a righteous person? And how are you going to use it for the Lord? By faith. What has he been telling you to do? And we're going to read from the, one of the greatest books of faith, the book of Hebrews. And Mike and I were reading this. So get your Bibles open. Get ready. Okay? Get your Bibles open, folks. Get your Bibles open. Book of Hebrews. Nine. It is believed by many uh, biblical scholars. And uh, even Pastor Rick Renner, that a woman uh, wrote the book of Hebrews, particularly Priscilla. Uh, and the book of Hebrews is a very supernatural book. It's all about faith. Um, and I love to read from it because it really speaks to your personal faith right now. And in order to know what the Lord is asking you to do, in order to know that you are going to receive of the miracles of God and of the plunder and of the finances and all of those things, is your faith ready to receive it? Are you at a point in your faith where you're ready to handle it and ready to receive it? All right. How do we know we're ready? to receive of all of these financial blessings? How do we know we're ready to start our marketplace ministry? How do we know that we are ready to receive the plunder from the victory and be faithful with it? How do we know that this has already been written for us uh, even before we were born and that these finances are to come to us at a certain time? To fulfill our purpose and calling from the Lord. Well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to read from my trusty King James Version. I usually say, and I'm going to give homework. I usually suggest uh, the King James for those who are um, really relying on the Holy Spirit to give them revelation. But if you're a new believer uh, and just starting to read the Bible, you should get a New Living Translation Bible, NLT Bible. I say youth and new believers should get a New Living Translation. Those of you who are really trying to grow in your walk and understanding with the Holy Spirit, King James, and he will give you understanding. Now, I'm going to give you, I read from the Bible prophetically. Hebrews is a very prophetic book. I'm going to teach you prophetically from Hebrews chapter 12. It's a governmental, uh, 12 is a governmental number, the perfect government of God. Why is Hebrews 12 speaking of the government of God to us? Well, let's read. Hebrews chapter 12. Christ is our example. Wherefore, seeing we are also, are encompassed about, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So this means that there is a great cloud of witnesses led by King Jesus cheering you on to fulfill your purpose for the Lord and your purpose for the kingdom of God in the earth. What would keep you from doing that purpose? Sin 
and excuses. Listen, I used to coach race car drivers. You know what held them back from winning races? You know what held them back from being fast? You know what held them back from a lot of stuff? A bunch of excuses. Their lack of faith, their lack of belief. So these are weighty things that we need to lay aside. Drop the excuses, drop the fear, drop the unbelief. Because Jesus and the cloud of witnesses are cheering you on. They're cheering you to victory. The only person that's holding you back is you. Hear what I said? Dump off the weight. Dump it off. Drop the excuses. Drop the fear. Renounce the old sinful ways. And you're going to speed up like a rocket ship. Woo! That nitrous oxide button, you're going to be, you're going to get some speed, honey. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. It is set down and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Your eyes must only be on the windshield straight ahead, looking to Jesus, cheering you on with your cloud of witnesses saying, I am the victory. Look to me. You can do all things through me, the Lord says. You can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth you. No excuses, no whining, no, oh, Lord, I don't know if I can do it. Jesus, take the wheel. I'll just sit here in the back seat. Oh. Jesus, take the wheel is a cute song, but it's not true. The Bible says, and right here, we must keep our eyes on Christ straight ahead. We can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth us. Listen to me. Your goal is to take the wheel and drive this purpose that has been given to you by Jesus. He's the author and finisher of your faith, of your purpose, of your destiny. He wrote it for you before you were born. You must take a hold of that wheel, get up on the wheel, and stand on the gas. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you with no excuses. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Look straight ahead and do not look behind you. It's time to go for it. It's time to go straight ahead. The author and finisher of your faith has already set this good and victorious course ahead of you. you got a whole cheering section cheering you on. Come on. Jesus looked to the cross with joy. What? What? He went to the cross with joy. Why? Because he knew the victory that was coming. He didn't worry about the pain. He didn't worry. He knew. If you got to endure some stretching, if you got to endure a little discomfort, that's going to stretch you out of your comfort zone to fulfill what Jesus has called you to do, that's nothing compared to what he endured for you. Nothing. Listen to me. You got to stretch yourself a little bit and throw off the excuses and quit your whining. Get up on the wheel and stand on the gas and drive this thing to victory with your purpose and your calling for the Lord with absolutely no excuses and enjoy. It's nothing. The discomfort of that is nothing compared to what Jesus endured for you. 
If you're a little embarrassed that you have to put yourself out there for the Lord, as nothing compared to the embarrassment and the shame that Jesus Christ endured for you on the cross. Now quit your whining, quit your excuses, quit your poor me while you can't do it, and get your butt behind the wheel. Let's go. And look ahead and go for it. Jesus is cheering you on. But you might have to stretch yourself a little bit. It might be a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning. But think about the discomfort that Jesus already endured for you. It's nothing compared to you having to stretch yourself a little bit to do this for the Lord and what he's called you to do. I'm preaching to you now. And because of what Jesus did, God set him at the right hand of the throne of God. And do you realize, because of that, we're also sitting sitting at the right hand of the throne of God? Ephesians chapter 2 says, He crucified all of our fears, all of our sin, all of our excuses, everything. He crucified it all on the cross. And we were raised up with him already, and we are seated at the right hand of God. The rewards are already there. All we got to do is partner with Jesus and do it. What? Jesus already did the hard part. And Jesus wrote your destiny. Ask him for what's in your books. Ask him to reveal it to you. Spend quiet time with him, and he will. Get your strategies from him, and he'll give them to you. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Don't start with the poor me stuff. Don't start for the reasons why you can't do it. Think about what Jesus endured. Ten times worse. We owe this to him. To do everything we can to fulfill our purpose for him. And he's with us in it. And our victory is guaranteed if we we do it with him. Hallelujah. You have not yet resisted unto the blood. Striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Have you forgotten what God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and his blood is speaking for you? Victory, victory, victory. You... Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. In other words, Jesus already shed his blood for you. You don't have to bleed for this victory. Jesus already did. You don't have to have pain and wounds and uh, excessive bleeding to fulfill this purpose. Jesus already bled for you. You don't have to strive against sin. Jesus makes it easy for you to release it onto him. And you have forgotten exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. That is the Holy Spirit encouraging you. The Father God encouraging you. You have you have the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Jesus already went through all the painful parts. He could do all things through him. The exhortations which speaketh unto you as unto children. In other words, Father God. He's saying, you are my child. I will give you everything you need to do this. And I will exhort into you. I will encourage you. I will speak blessing unto you. But I will also correct you. 
if you're going in the wrong direction. My son despiseth not thou the chastening of the Lord. No faint when out thou art rebuked of him. Now, I am giving you some chastening right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Saying, get up off your butts and move and stop your excuses. This is the chastening of the Lord. And I say it with what? Love. Because I want to see you fulfill your purpose for the Lord. Because I feel the Father's heart. And the Father is correcting you because he doesn't want you to sit in a bunch of excuses. He doesn't want you to sit around on your butt and not fulfill your purpose. He doesn't want you to feel weak and faint of heart. He's chasing you. He's correcting you. The Holy Spirit is coaching you and pushing you. And don't despise it when I do this to you. Don't despise it when the Holy Spirit does it to you. Why? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. In other words, if you're not getting a check in your spirit from the Lord, if you're not hearing get up off your butt and do something, if you're not hearing stop the excuses and quit your whining from the Holy Spirit, then you're not considered a son and daughter of God. If you're not hearing correction, if you're not hearing coaching, and if you're not hearing strong words from the Holy Spirit that says, get up off the floor, pick up your mat and walk, quit your whining, quit your excuses, it's go time, then you're not considered a son and daughter of God. He only corrects who he loves. Ooh. Ooh. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Do you correct your kids? Do you correct your kids? Huh? Of course you do. Right? And he also chastens us with love. And he says, I love you and I believe in you. He encourages you. He's giving you exhortation. So it's not all correction. It's not all get up off your butt and pick up your mat and walk. Most of what comes from the Father and from the Holy Spirit is encouragement, exhortation. He's going to encourage you with his love. He's going to tell you, you've got this. I'm with you. He's going to exhort into you, encourage you. So you're going to give both. That's a good, good father. Ooh, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof you are all partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. So you're going to get encouragement from the Lord, from Father God, exhortation, but you're also going to get correction. If you get correction, it means you are a true son or daughter. And you must be glad that you get it. Be happy. Furthermore, We have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to our father of spirits and live? How much more are you going to get the correction and the encouragement of Father God? This is why we must really ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Every day, every morning, we must ask, Father God, what is on your heart today, Father God? Am I going in a wrong direction? Correct me. If I'm going in the right direction, encourage me. Thank you for being my Father. Because he wants us to have life and life abundant and fulfill 
what Jesus Christ has written about us, what he created us to be and do. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Wow. This is a verse that confirms my prophetic word. Our inheritance, both spiritually, physically, and financially. Financially, financially, financially. That we are not to really expect that from our earthly fathers. We are more than anything to expect it from our heavenly father. We are partakers of his holiness. And what is God's holiness? We're talking about his complete and total fullness of God. That includes mind, body, soul, spirit, life, health, wealth, prosperity of the kingdom. So he corrects us. Not for pleasure, but for our profit. So we can be partakers of his holiness. Everything that the Father has, Almighty God, will belong to you as well. And I'm talking land, houses you didn't build, finances blessings, things that come from afar. He did this for his own son when the three wise men came with camels loaded down. And it wasn't just three little tiny boxes of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It was carpets, silks. They thought a king was being born. It would have been worth millions and millions of dollars. We get, because of Jesus Christ, we are partakers of all of this. He's saying to us, if you stay focused, you keep looking forward. And let me correct you and let me encourage you and fulfill what Jesus Christ has written about you as the author and finisher of your purpose, of your faith, of your calling on this world with no excuses, with no whining, and do it with joy like Jesus did, where he's already made it the path easier for you. You're going to be corrected on that path and you're going to be accelerated. Not only are you going to get blessings, and victory, but you're going to get everything that the kingdom of God has to offer here on the earth. He's doing it for your profit. What does the word profit mean? For your benefit. Physically, spiritually, and financially. Hello. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. You might not think, I'm giving you correction today. You might not think it's so great. Holy Spirit gives you correction. You might not think it's so great at the time. You might feel a little grieved while you're getting correction. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. God wants to make you righteous. And who gets the wealth of the wicked? The righteous. It's for your profit, for your benefit, for your health, wealth, prosperity, for your household. Allow the Holy Spirit to correct you Partner with him. He is working to make you righteous. And when you are righteous, you receive what? The wealth of the wicked. I just told you. The wealth of the wicked is being stripped right now and given to the righteous. Are you ready to receive it? Are you being made righteous? 
Because if you are not righteous in the sight of the Lord, the wealth of the wicked will be stripped from you too. Say, Lord, I want to be righteous. Take this scripture right here. Come on. Hebrews 12, 11. Lord, correct me. Guide me. Even if it's uncomfortable. I know it's going to yield the fruit that you want. Of righteousness. And I will exercise righteousness as you teach me because I want the transference of wealth and I'm going to use it for your glory. Prepare me. Prepare my heart. Prepare my faith. Prepare me in holiness and righteousness so I can be a good steward of these finances that are coming to me. Be a good steward of the land that is coming to me. Prepare me for it. Prepare me for this ministry. Prepare me for this business. Prepare me for this purpose. And I want to endure in it. I don't want it to just be a fleeting thing. I want to endure in it. Now here comes the encouragement. Hebrews 12, 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands that hang down. And the feeble knees. Sit up upright. Lift up your hands. Strengthen yourself. Come on. And make straight the paths of your feet. Start to take those first steps. Even if you don't see the whole picture. In faith. Put your feet to your faith. Start where you are. And show God you're going to be faithful. And you know what this says right here? Make straight the paths for your feet, lest that which is lame will be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So if you don't start walking in faith, even though you don't see the whole picture, you're going to stay weak. Your healing may not come. Some of you might have the excuse, well, I need my body healed before I can fulfill what God has called me to do. Or I can't do something or can't do this, can't do that because I'm too old or I'm not strong enough. Or I can't sit down and write a book because my back would hurt. Stop it. I need my stop it hat. It says right there, start walking. Start doing it with no excuses. No matter what is lame on you, it'll be healed. What? Maybe that's why some of you aren't getting your healing. Because you were told to start taking steps of faith. To start your purpose for the Lord. Even if your back was still hurting, even if you don't have your complete healing, even if your finances aren't healed yet, the Lord is saying, Hebrews 12, 13, get up, start walking in faith. Start the process of your purpose. And if you do this, whatever is lame on you, it'll be healed. I'm going to tell you, that's what happened to me. God healed my body when I started to walk and move and get on this microphone every day. And it kept leading me to my healing more and more and more and more and more. God's word is true. And follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Make your path of peace. Say, I come in peace. I come in the name of the Lord. When I go into someone's house, or I go into the grocery store, or I go into the barn to do my chores, whatever it is that I go to do, if I'm going to 
present my books to some place or whatever. I say, I come in peace. And the book of Peter tells us to do this. I come in peace. I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a good habit to have. Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, thereby many may be defiled. So, in other words, this is why many of you who are getting prepared to fulfill your purpose for the Lord, I teach you on soul healing. I teach you on getting your soul healed while you are fulfilling your purpose. Because if any, if there's any root of bitterness in you, any unforgiveness, any root of bitterness, any root of anger, you must fully, fully, fully release that bitterness, release that unforgiveness, release that anger, resentment, rejection, and get it on the cross of Jesus Christ. Because what happens? Those are the things that are going to hold you down and hold you back. Right? Lay aside every weight as we began this chapter. This is why I tell everybody, go deep into my soul-cleansing prayers and get that bitterness healed, get that rejection healed, get that unforgiveness healed. You've got to release it. You've got to get rid of it. Come on. What happens if you allow the bitterness, the unforgiveness, the resentment, the rejection, the sin, the fleshly ways get in the way? It'll try to continue to defile you and throw you off course. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. In other words, be careful that you don't allow temptation or shortcuts to throw you off track. Did you hear what I said? Be careful you don't allow, allow temptation or shortcuts throw you off track. Esau gave in to the temptation. He gave in to the shortcut. He wanted his fleshly needs met right away. He wasn't willing to endure for the full blessing. Look to the mate. Esau gave in to his fleshly desires. He wasn't willing to endure and wait for the full blessing. When I started this ministry, it wasn't easy. There was no money coming in. I only had 20 people on here to come on the broadcast. But I had to what? I had to endure. I had to keep desiring the good that God had ahead of me. I couldn't give in to my instant gratification. I couldn't have microwave faith. I had to keep enduring through, persevering, keep taking one step in front of the other, keeping my eyes on the long term that was to come, keeping my eyes on the victory, on the prize. It was greater than giving in to that quick temptation. Come on. It's an endurance race. For you know how that afterward, when he would have her- he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. The devil got a hold of him. The devil got a hold of him early on. The devil didn't mess around and said, oh, I see, this guy is weak in the flesh. 
I can get him. Everybody thinks it's Jacob that deceived. Jacob was making the pot of stew for the whole family. It was Esau that made the choice to give in to his flesh. So we must make sure that we don't give in to the desires of the flesh. We must keep taking the steps forward, keeping our eyes on the prize. And this victory isn't just waiting for us in heaven. It's right here. I had to keep seeing and believing what God had shown me for the success and blessing of this ministry. Was it tough to endure sometimes? Did I want to give up? Did I want to give in? It it got hard. But I had to keep my eyes on the long-term vision. I had to keep plowing forward and not look back. I couldn't give in for... And there were temptations that came. There were temptations that came that I had to say no to. And keep taking the steps in faith and trust the Lord. We're not coming to this mount, this mountain, right? He's going to give you influence. He's going to raise you up to the high places so that you would be touched and that burn with fire and onto blackness and darkness and tempest. But he's not going to bring you into destruction if you stay on course with him. And stay faithful and don't give in to the temptations to quit. Don't give in to the temptations to do the shortcuts in the easy ways, right? But listen to the Holy Spirit and do it his way. Because he's building strength and character in you all the way there. He's teaching you in righteousness all the way there. Not to bring you to a hill of destruction, but to bring you to a mountain of victory, of blessing, of light and glory here in the earth at the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they heard entreated that the word shall not be spoken to them anymore, that for they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stone or thrust through with a dart. So terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. So God showed them, the Israelites, his great and mighty power. He showed them his power. In other words, I don't know if you know when you were reading about the children of Israel with Moses, when they came to his holy mountain and the power of God was on the mountain. They were so fearful. The fear of the Lord came upon them with his power. And this is what this is about. God actually revealed the fear of the Lord to the Israelites through Moses. He revealed his power. The sound, his sound, his voice was like a trumpet. So loud, blasting in their ears. The mountain shook. The people actually witnessed the power of God. The fear of the Lord. Because what were they doing? They were not enduring. They were not enduring. They created a golden calf. They didn't want to wait. 
They didn't want to wait in God's promises. He had just parted the Red Sea for them. He had just got them out of Egypt. How quickly they forget. They didn't want to endure. They didn't want to wait patiently on the Lord. And what were they doing? Making a golden calf. They gave in to temptation. They got the fear of the Lord. That's what happened. Because what Hebrews is saying here, a lot of people miss this, is he's talking about what happened to the children of Israel. And what happened to Esau when they didn't endure in faith. And they went for the quick fix. Or they slid back into reading their horoscope or going to a tarot card reader. Because they didn't want to wait on the Lord and stay in faith. Or they allowed themselves to get compromised. Endure and listen to the Lord. Ask for the fear of the Lord. For they could not endure that which was commanded. Come on. And terrible was the sight. And Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Even Moses, who saw the face, the face of God, got the fear of the Lord. But you have come unto Mount Zion and to the city of the living God and heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable, innumerable company of angels. We are speaking here to those who are in Christ Jesus. You are already in his government. Mount Zion is the government of God. You are into the city of the living God. You are part of heavenly Jerusalem. And you are surrounded by a innumerable company of angels and a crowd of witnesses. To the general assembly of the church of the firstborn. So in other words, God is saying, he shook his holy mountain to the Israelites. And put the fear of the Lord in them. Even Moses was afraid. But we're talking about those of us that are under the new covenant. Those of us who are in Christ Jesus. And I'm on Hebrews chapter 12, 22. 22 means key. Isaiah 22, 22, the key to the government is on his shoulders. Whatever doors he closes, no man can open. Whatever doors he opens, no man can shut. We have come into a new covenant. We have come into the government of God through Christ Jesus. We are already in the holy mountain of God already as believers in Jesus Christ. We are already part of heavenly Jerusalem. We already have an innumerable company of angels that surround us. And we have the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, the cloud of witnesses, believers that have gone before us, that are cheering us on, that are written in heaven to God be the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. In other words, your cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on. And to Jesus, who is the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh the better things than that of Abel. We've got a way better than the Israelites. We got a way better than Esau. If we mess up, we can repent and get back on track. That's what this is saying. This is saying Esau and the Israelites messed up really bad. And they got the fear of the Lord, big time. And they got just punishment right then. They had to stay in the desert for 40 more years, and Esau lost his inheritance. But now we have Jesus Christ. 
And what this is saying here, if you mess up, if you make a mistake, if you give in to temptation, turn to Jesus immediately, immediately, immediately. Because you got people cheering you on from heaven. You're part of the new covenant. The firstborn of the church of Jesus Christ, the disciples and Jesus Christ are all interceding for you. That you will not fail. That your faith will not fail. What happened to Peter? Peter was a sign of this. Peter was a Hebrews 22, 23, 24 sign. That this new covenant was happening. That Jesus gave him a chance to repent. Jesus gave him a chance to turn this around. Jesus gave Peter a chance to get back on track. Because why? Jesus' blood was already speaking. The new covenant had been established from Peter on to all of us to fulfill our purpose and ministry for God, for the kingdom of God. Because Jesus and the disciples were the firstborn of the church that are interceding for us in heaven and our cloud of witnesses that are interceding for us in heaven. And Jesus did it for Peter and said, Peter, I'm praying for you that your faith will not fail you. You will stay on track. Satan will not sift you like wheat, like he did with Esau. Uh Uh-uh. Because Jesus is interceding for you. His blood is speaking for us now. We are under the new covenant. We can quickly repent and get the blood of Jesus Christ on that mistake and get back on track. And Jesus said, "I I will have my Father give you the Holy Spirit to show you what to do. You see that you refuse not him that speaketh. Do not refuse Jesus Christ. Do not refuse the Holy Spirit. For if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall we, shall not we escape. If we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, as long as you are on this path, stay focused on Jesus. Continue to repent if you make a mistake. Know that his blood is speaking for you. Grace and mercy, grace and mercy, grace and mercy. He is the perfecter of your faith, the author and finisher of it. You've got everybody cheering you on. And if you mess up, go to Jesus and ask him to get you back on track. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you and give you the next steps. Come on, come on. This is a faith walk right here whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also in heaven. This is what we're going through right now. We're going through the once more shaking. We're going through the once more shaking. We're being shaken awake. God is giving a chance for those who are asleep. He's shaking both the heavens and the earth. Because this is the time of us preparing for the return of Jesus Christ. And now more than anything, it's it's time for us to awaken and step into our purpose for the kingdom and be part of preparing the bride of Christ. This is the great awakening, my friends. This is the great harvest of souls. Heaven is coming to earth. This is the second great shaking that Hebrews is talking about. And this word. This is the book of Hebrews. The Lord said he's going to shake the earth again, and here we are. It's happening. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. And be encouraged for your loved ones. Ask God to shake them awake. Don't be afraid. Say, Father God, thank you for your second great shaking of the heavens and the earth that you speak of in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, that you would shake my loved one awake to give them a chance to fulfill their purpose. Thank you for your grace and mercy. And this word, yet once more, signifies that removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, 
that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So what's happening in the earth and in the, hev- in the heavens? We're being shaken awake. God is rooting out the evil strongholds, and not just in the earth, but in the heavens, and the powers and principalities are being shaken out and removed. We know that by doing our land assignments, right? We are being shaken awake to come and stand and pray on the land. Now, we cannot be shaken because we are in Christ Jesus. We remain. We do not leave the planet. We win the planet. We're not shaken or lifted off the planet. What's rooted off? What's removed? The powers and principalities of the air and all evil demonic strongholds are shaken and rooted out. And if your loved ones are not awake, they must be shaken. And you can't be afraid to ask God to shake them. You can't be afraid. Ask God to shake them. Awake. According to his word. Lord, shake my loved ones awake. Shake them and shake them and shake them and shake them until they awaken to the truth. They receive the truth, know the truth, walk in the truth. And fall to their knees in repentance. A free gift for all of us. Wherefore, Hebrews 12, 28, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. The kingdom of God is coming to earth. We're receiving of it. We are, we are staying in the earth and we are, we are rooted deeply in the courts of our God. We will not be shaken. We are moving forward for the Lord, and we are asking the Lord to shake those who are not awake. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. It's coming to earth through us. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. And I'm talking Holy Ghost fire that's coming across the earth right now. Bringing heaven to earth. Burning up the chaff. This is all a spiritual awakening, my friends. And this all comes through us fulfilling our purpose for the Lord. Who wants to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? I know I do. Now, here's your homework tonight. I want you to read Hebrews chapter 12 again. And I want you to look at your life and see where God has been encouraging you, exhorting you to step into your purpose for the kingdom. And where he's been chastening you and correcting you. Now, I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write it down. Father God. This is where you've been exhorting me, where you've been encouraging me in my purpose. Am I calling for your kingdom right now? And Father God, this is where you've been correcting me. And I want you to write those things down and lift it up to the Lord and thank him for that and ask him for more. Ask him for more encouragement and more correction and tell him you will continue to take these steps of faith. That's your homework for tonight. Write it down. If you want to put it on a piece of paper and scan it or type it out on your phone and scan it and send it in, you can do so and submit it to my site at annamariestrohan.com contact. We've got a little place to put an attachment if you want to hand in your homework. My friends, it's time. It's time. And it's exciting. And the only getting left behind of this whole thing is not about getting beamed up out of here, out of your dusty pew, out of a out of a out of a religious establishment that's dry toast. We don't leave the planet, we win the planet. Jesus said, Occupy until I come. 
And we have to fulfill our purpose for the Lord right now, putting one foot in front of the other in a reverent fear of the Lord and accept correction from the Holy Spirit and accept encouragement from the Holy Spirit. We are the kingdom of God through us coming to the earth, through us, through us. Heaven is coming to earth through us. And we have work to do. And it's time to get up on the wheel and stand on the gas and look at Jesus through that windshield and know that he's with us all the way. We have the victory already. But we've got to step into it and move in it and do our part in it. And I hope this encourages you today. I love you all so much. And I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want you to come back Wednesday with your questions for free coaching and mentoring about these things, about stepping into your purpose. Is the Lord giving you dreams and visions and you're trying to understand what he's telling you? We'll help you with that. We want to activate you so you can fulfill what Jesus Christ has written about you for your destiny and obedience here in the earth. I don't care how old you are. Remember, all of heaven is cheering you on to this. Hebrews 12. And I'm cheering you on. 